Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Speak Up for Blue podcast. Andrew Lewin here, your host. Uh, we're here on Friday. It's a different Ocean Talk Friday today. I don't have a guest. The week uh, got away from me, but I want to talk about something that I've seen a lot in in my time in in ocean uh, ocean conservation, marine science, and and conservation. That in the way things are communicated to. Uh, to a public audience, no matter who that audience is. And it's, it's done by a variety of, of, of different types of people. It doesn't have to be a specific type, uh, but it's, it's concerning to me. And I wanted to address it because we are, we are making you, the audience member, uh, aware of what's happening uh, with, with the ocean in hopes to be inspired that so much that you will go and tell other people, you know, about ocean conservation. And, uh, and, but the, the thing is, is in your message, uh, you have to be correct. Uh, and you have to, you have to cover your bases when you, when you actually speak to your message. So we're going to talk a little bit about science communication. I'm going to give you an example. Um, it's going to be a quick episode, uh, but I, but I, I need to address this because I think it's, it's, it, it really, it it will let you know if you are you know if if people will take you seriously or people will just sort of pass you off as an as sort of an extremist or someone who's just like i yeah i don't i don't provide the facts so i'm not i'm just going to do i'm going to manipulate everything whether i mean it or not to the point where uh you're not going to listen to me anymore so i think it 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 definitely has to be addressed uh, this is nobody in particular but a specific type of person that does this or uh, type of people that do this. And uh, it kind of irks me uh, because I feel that they have the passion to do it, but they don't do it properly where people are going to be like, Hey, you know, let's, let's do this. Let's take care of this. Let's, let's help each other out. So uh, with that said, this is, you know, you may or may not agree with me on this. Um, so I want to talk about it more because I think this is extremely important. So we do that in the speak up for blue Facebook group, the Speaker for Blue podcast community Facebook group, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the reason why I want to do that is because, yeah, I get to tell you, you know, how I feel or what I think you should do or or not. Um, but there are a lot of people in our group and a lot of people who could be in our group who are have their own experiences uh, and they want to share them. And whether you agree with me or not is 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 not an issue. Um, but it's it's good to discuss this. And I think the Facebook group community is a, is a perfect. Uh, platform to do that um, is part of Speak Up for Blue's uh, sort of um, effort to provide a platform to not only make you aware of what's happening in the ocean, but allows you to, um, uh, you know, uh, discuss it as well. So you can do that, speakupforblue.com, speakupforblue.com forward slash group. All you have to do is just go to that link, click on it or, or type it in. And then you get to uh, go right to our group, use your Facebook account, uh, request to join. I'll let you in. I always, I always let people in as soon as I see it. And as you've been hearing, I'm a little addicted to social media and Facebook and all that. So I check it multiple times a day uh, and I let people in whenever there's a request. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this show started. If you are sick of hearing of the doom and gloom of the ocean and not knowing what to do, you're in the right place. If you want to meet people working to protect the ocean, then you are in the right place. If you want to find out how you can get involved in protecting the ocean, then you are in the right place. This is the Speak Up for Blue podcast, and I am here to empower you to live for a better ocean. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Speak Up for Blue podcast. I am your host, Andrew Lewin, founder of speakupforblue.com, marine ecologist, and self-proclaimed oceanpreneur. Uh, today is Ocean Talk Friday, but we're going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to talk to you. Uh, it's going to be a solo episode. Uh, the week got away from me a little bit, I have to admit. Uh, we try to, to, uh, to record Ocean Talk Friday the same week, so we are up to date on the articles that have, that have been coming out. Uh, and I usually try and bring a guest on. Uh, and instead of doing that type of show today, I want to address something that I've seen in our group and I've seen online multiple times. Uh, and I think it's important uh, to discuss this. And as I said in the pre-intro, you know, there's a, there are people out there that will, will put out a message. They're very passionate about 
marine science and conservation, probably more about marine conservation. They want to protect species. They want to either a specific species, a lot of times specific species, or a habitat or a set of species or the ocean in general. Um, they do it very aggressively, uh, and it's more black and white, not in a gray kind of area, which conservation tends to fall under if you've been listening to the show. Uh, and I don't fault them for that. But the way the message comes out a lot of the times uh, makes people doubt their intentions. And I think it, it and it, it goes, it, it sets everybody back a little bit. Uh, and I think the reason why I want to discuss it today is not to chastise the people who are doing it uh, or even try and change what they're doing. I'd rather they, they do it in a different way, but I can't change people. What I want to do is make you aware of this because if you are telling people about the ocean that you've learned on this podcast or if in a, just in a general conversation, then what I want you to do is be confident that you're telling the right thing uh, and you're, you're saying it in the right way so that people are like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you beforehand, I'm a very middle-of-the-road person. I'm not a very confrontational person. I don't like confrontation. Uh, I'll do it, but I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I'm the kind of science communicator that sees both sides of the story and tries to work with people within any type of stakeholder industry, whether it be fishing, whether it be hunting, whether it be um, oil and gas and stuff like that. I see it from both sides of just the, my personality. I tend to see and try to understand both points of view, both sides. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm more I'm more biased towards the environment when it comes to politics and whatnot. But that's just usually against policies or not enforcing policies or lack of policies that will help protect the ocean that I feel are necessary. Um, so I want to I want to sort of just predicate that before I go into this. I am not a confrontational person. I see both sides. And I try to understand both sides before I proceed. Uh, some people might think that that's not the way to do it, and that's fine. Uh, but that's just the way my personality is. So I want you guys to just be aware of that before I go into this. Uh, not to necessarily say, well, no, I'm not that type of person, so I'm not going to listen to Andrew. But just keep that in mind as, it go, as, I, as I go along. Um, but before I do, I just want to let you know this uh, episode is brought to you by uh, the Speak Up for Blue Patreon campaign. It's a campaign... That I'm feeling I'm switching the uh, the focus a little bit. So in the past, I've advertised Patreon as a as a campaign to for our startup to build the team to help pay for equipment uh, and so forth. And and you know I've always I, to be honest I've felt uneasy a little bit about that type of of uh, approach because I don't want people to you know I don't want people to feel that they're paying for me to do what I love, even though that's essentially what it is. But I want them to get a purpose out of it. I want them to get something out of it. And yes, I do feel that what we do is extremely important. Um, extremely important to make people aware. It takes a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of collaborators that are that are there that help me out. Uh, and it's it's fantastic. It's, it, it's definitely a team effort. And we're building that team slowly, building content slowly, different, uh, different podcasts, um, YouTube channel, and so forth. But um, I feel like, you know, as Speak Up for Blue is a social enterprise, as, as, a, as a company with a mission, a for-profit company with a mission to have sort of a triple bottom line, and that is uh, social change, environmental change, as well as a profit, I feel that, uh, you know, the Patreon campaign should really reflect the mission. And that mission is to help conservation, right? Is to provide a need is to provide a service that's needed in conservation. So in the Patreon campaign, I'm I'm retooling it and I'm coming up with different ways uh, or a different way to sort of put that mission together. And it's going to be more mission based. It's not going to be the purpose is not going to be, hey, st help me start up my business. The purpose is going to be help me serve this community within the ocean conservation field. And my first project is. Uh, is, uh, well, actually, I've got a number of projects that I'm going to be sharing within Patreon over a blog post over the next few days, or a couple of blog posts over the next, well, actually, a few weeks. Um, but the first one that I've been wanting to do for a while is a citizen science project. Now, we've talked about citizen science before, uh, where there are a lot of citizen science programs and so forth. Um, but for the, the, what I wanted to serve is not the citizen science programs, it's partly that, 
the idea what I wanted to do is serve citizen scientists or new citizen scientists or people who want to become citizen scientists. And I feel that that is underserved as a platform on the internet. Now, I'm not sure what that's going to look like, and I'd love to have your help. So if you want to contribute to this uh, sort of plan, you can do so by going to speakupforblue.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Um, but my idea is to come up with some kind of group or membership where people can get together and discuss different projects. And the idea is also to provide training for citizen scientists to uh, identify animals. There are different programs where you know you have to. You're required to do courses or some sort of um, visual course or online course or even in-person course. Um, but it'd be nice to have. Uh, what I'd like to have is a um, a membership or a group where people get together and they discuss their citizen scientist experience, their um, what they want to do. Also, bring in different programs to not advertise, but make you aware of the different types of programs are in and i'd like to make the program free uh with an option of contributing to the patreon campaign uh so we're going to do a lot of work to to get that up uh and i'd love to hear your uh feedback if you're in the speak up for blue group or or if you want to do it through patreon but i'd love to hear your feedback on what you prefer would you prefer a facebook group or would you prefer like a membership site that you can go into uh, through um, through like my through the Speak Up for Blue website. So uh, let me know what you what you think about that. That'd be really appreciative. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so if you want to go, to, if you want to become a contributor by a monthly contributor, um, you can do that. Uh, if you go speakupforblue.com forward slash Patreon p a t r e o n, and we can get that set up. Okay, uh, let's get on with the show. So I've introed this show. Uh, there's an example that I want to talk about, and um, and it happened this week in the group. Um, where somebody posted about basking sharks and how basking sharks weren't protected um, and that they needed to be protected as an endangered species. This person has done a lot of uh, work with, with, uh, with basking sharks since, since the 90s, early 90s, 1990, I guess. And they, um, they you know, feel that there's not a lot of them out there, and especially in the Eastern Pacific, and they need to be uh, considered endangered under the Endangered Species Act in the U.S. So uh, there was a post, somebody else posted uh, that, you know, hey, you know what? They're actually protected. They're you know, under the Endangered Species Act as a, as a species of special concern. And, uh, the you know, there was a, there was a sort of like a, a little bit of a debate going back and forth saying, hey, you know what? They're not protected. Uh, but th th what it ended up happening and, and what I was trying to flesh out and my point here is basking sharks are listed as species of special concern under the Endangered Species Act in, uh, in the U.S. On the PDF that was shared in the group of the listing and the description, it gives you a description of the species, their whereabouts, um, where the different populations occur, especially in the U.S. because it was a U.S. document, a U.S. government document, and then the lack of data, the lack of knowledge of population sizes and increase or decrease in tr uh, trending or trends that increase and decrease in population size. Uh, you know, there was a lot of different, there's a lot of mi information missing. So it's difficult to put them as anything else, either less or more. It had to be put on the Endangered Species Act, but it was listed as special concern, not endangered. So there, when, you, when you're on the Endangered Species Act, and I know for Canada, it could be a little different. But there's different category levels, and it all depends on their population size or the information that's out there. So there's um, uh, least concern, which means they're 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 on the brink of being endangered uh, or or of, of of being considered. So, but they're not. We don't really know much information, so they're not. Um, they're not like it's not crazy protection. So you have that. Then you have special concern. Then you have vulnerable. Uh, then you have, I believe it's endangered and then critically endangered, which is like the next step is, is uh, extinction. Critically endangered, would, an example of that would be the vaquita, right? The vaquita would be clear, uh, considered clear, uh, critically endangered because uh, it has less than uh, 60 or less than 30 individuals now uh, and it keeps decreasing. So that is on a, de a very strict, a very strong decreasing trend. 
that would be considered critically endangered. Now, special concern, like the basking shark, it's really more of let's list them because we don't know much about them, but we know they don't have a big population. They're an animal that is slow growing. Um, not much is known about their physiology or biology. Uh, we are going to find out more. I'm trying to get uh, a, an expert in, in uh, I'm working right now. We've got email sending back and forth uh, about an expert in basking sharks. So we're going to talk more about that and they're listing a species, a species concern or special concern. So we're going to talk more about that in another interview. So stay tuned for that. And we're also, I'm, I'm working on uh, working with somebody who's done a lot of work within uh, 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 species at risk, let's just say, or endangered species and the different levels and why there are different levels and why, you know, a basking shark who has very little data known why they're special concern and not considered in danger. And I'll tell you why in a second. So anyway, the, the story goes for, for the, this, this group posting, you know, that in that pamphlet, it, it talked about the different protections that uh, the basking shark went under. Uh, so the basking shark is, is what I would call an international species. It crosses different borders in the ocean, Atlantic and Pacific. Um, the ones we were talking about cross between the, the U.S. Uh, and Canada. In Canada, the basking shark is listed as an endangered species. In the U.S., it's listed as special concern. That's a big difference in terms of categories, right? Um, and it all depends on management and what each category goes under. I don't know the specifics in terms of the levels of protection, okay? Um, but the point what I was trying to make in, in the group was, hey, you know what? These guys are actually protected. They're protected under CITES, which is an international trade agreement. They're protected. In other words, you can't export them from many from a lot of countries. I think all the countries. Um, you can't. Uh, there's there are they're listed as in in their, their IUCN red list species. Um, they're endangered in Canada. There's a California no take, so you can't actually fish for them, or I guess hunt for them, or fish for them. So you can't actually take them from there. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different protections under law. And the person who was posting originally said that they weren't protected. And I feel, and I, and, and from that statement, you can, you can, you can probably understand where I was like, well, hold on a second. They are protected under law. They're protected, right? So theoretically, they're supposed to be protected. What the person who was trying to post, I believe was trying to say was the protection is not enforced. They're still taken. There's still like ship strikes. There's still... There's still a lot of things that happen to basking sharks that cause death or harm. And their protection status, the person who, who was posting felt that the protection status as special concern, it was not sufficient and it should be endangered. And maybe at that point, they would be protected more. I'm not sure I agree with that. I, I do agree that the lack of data should not be an excuse to put it just as special concern, maybe be more conservative and be um, and put them as endangered because you don't know where they're, they are in that list because you don't have much data. That's how I feel just off of not knowing much about the population size of basking sharks in the different, in the different areas that they, that they reside. But what I don't like is the fact that somebody comes up and says, they're not protected. We need to protect them, right? And I feel it's just a, it's a it's a misrepresentation of where the protection lies. I feel that if he if this person came out and said, you know, they're listed on as special concern under the Endangered Species Act, but they're not they're not the, the the protection is not good enough, is not sufficient, and a lot of things that that this person has seen in the field happens even though they're protected and they need to be prote they need to be better protected. Historical levels have shown that there's a decrease. We need to better protect them. So I feel that that is a better way to start off a post or to start off some sort of communication about this particular species or any species really. Talk about what their protection level is and why it's not sufficient. Or is it an enforcement issue? Right? Which it could be, could very well be. There seems to be a good, a lot of protection for these under law. However, what's the enforcement, which tends to happen quite a bit. So I think when we communicate this type of information, we really need to be careful on how we communicate it. Now, I'm not saying I'm right all the time. I'm not saying that 
my facts. I've got all my facts. I, I cover a lot of different topics. And to be honest, it's why I have a lot of experts on to discuss more because I want to find out more about things. And the way I find out is to talk to people, right? Talk to experts in the field. Talk to people who are actually seeing this type of stuff, right? And I feel that, you know, when, when somebody challenges you on something, on the way you're communicating, you have to step back out of what you're trying to do. And I do this too. And not take it personally, but step back and be like, oh, right. I see what I did there. I didn't tell them that they were, that this, this species was protected. Okay, you're right. I should have started off that way. Let's move on from there. I, I really mean that they're not enforced or I don't think that's sufficient in terms of what is protected. And what would really help, and I don't have that yet, and that's why I'm hoping to get that person who deals with species at risk on, is to look at what, what each level in the Endangered Species Act were, uh, comes with, what, what protection comes with each level, is what I'm trying to say. So we need to find that out so that we know, like if it's listed spe- spe- a special concern, more research is being done on it. There's more, you know, it triggers more funding for organizations to work with that, or there's like a data mining um, exercise being done under special concern to mine more data, to get more data on of, of existing organizations who are doing work on basking sharks and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I guess my point here, I'm going to finish up, but I guess my point here is be careful what you say. It really comes with science communication. Be careful what you say. This is stuff, you don't need to, a degree to talk about this stuff. Uh, you can be somebody who's very passionate about the basking shark or any other species, but understand that people need all the facts before they can make a decision. And if you're trying to get more protection out of somebody uh, or for a species, and you're trying to get them better protected, like in a realistic fashion, so that in the water you want protection, like whether it be enforcement or whether it be a band of nets that they get caught up in, or, you know, it's a because basking shark is such a big shark, it's a planktonic shark, um, they tend to go like on the surface, there tend to be ship strikes. If you need more protection in terms of ship channel traffic, you know, state that. Don't just say it needs to be better protected because it's not protected when we know by law it's protected in some sort of fashion. So the, the, the theoretical regulatory tools are there. Now we need to put it into place and make a case of why that's not being put into place properly. Whether it be enforcement, whether it be we need to talk to NOAA or we need to talk to uh, the Endangered Species Act and find out what needs to be done. Uh, get more information on that. Collaborate with uh, people who, uh, with uh, nonprofit organizations who deal with this type of advocacy, right? Trying to get people or trying to get uh, government departments to enforce endangered species legislation, right? Because that's why it's that's what it's there for. There's to there's there's you know there, there's a lot of organizations, a lot of people out there who do their spend their entire career to get a species listed, whether it be in CITES, whether it be um, an endangered species, whether it be a marine protected area, they spend a lot of their lives dedicated toward getting that listed and implemented. But then there's also the, it has to function properly. It has to actually be put into place. It actually actually has, uh, has to work that way. And if it doesn't, then what was all the effort for, right? So it's one point of getting it listed or protected in some sort of way under law. So you have the regulatory tool to come back at people and say, well, it's actually protected. You can't take this. Um, and then there's the other aspect of, well, hold on a second. You know, let's actually, once it's done, let's get it done. Let's, let's actually enforce it, right? Let's make sure that it's not done. Like what is causing an endangered species or a species to actually become more endangered or to be put on that list? All right, that's what it's doing. Let's, let's trigger some funding to put into place for nonprofit organizations or any kind of non-governmental organization, academic institutions who are doing research out there to help get that done, right? To help reduce bycatch, to maybe use different uh, nets if they get caught up, change shipping lanes, right? When you find out where these basking sharks, you know, go. I bet you a lot of the times it's since they're planktonic or they, they eat plankton, they're probably going to follow a lot of the same migration routes 
because uh, they, they go long migratory routes as marine mammals, right? As whales. So look at that. How is that? How is that differ? Right? So um, there are a lot of things that can be done, but what is being done with all these different species? That's what I think the message should focus on when you're trying to protect is here's the listing or here's the, what's protected. If it is, I don't. And then you say, I don't think it's protected properly. And this is why, and this is what I think needs to be done. Talk to your government organization. Don't just go, it's not protected. There's a lot like depressing, depressing, depressing. Here are the problems. Here are the problems. Here are the problems. It's not protected at all. And don't even mention it's listing. It's very misleading. And what can happen is a lot of people can be like, hold on a second. This isn't working. Like, you, you know, you just misled me. How am I supposed to believe anything you say after? Right? There, to get somebody's trust who is just getting into to ocean conservation is not an easy thing. It has to be earned. Right? You can't just state something and expect people to just fall under. You have to show the steps to take to prove it. There are organizations out there who actually put together a letter of talking points that will help people just say, hey, okay, I'll take these talking points, I'll put it in my letter, and I'll send an email to my government representative. Right? Which actually get read. You know what I mean? So, and they just say, you know, the organization will say, here are the talking points, put it in your own words, and go. Right? So they help people along. Make it as easy as possible for them to go in and say, hey, this is what we need to talk about. These are the major issues and these are the solutions that we feel need to be done that aren't being conducted. That is conservation. That is collaborating with people. And that is how you do it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Go to the Speak Up For Blue Facebook group at speakupforblue.com forward slash group. All you have to do is so once you get there, you whether it be from mobile or uh, on your desktop, all you have to do is just uh, click request to join. I will let you in. I think we have almost 190 people in there, which is fantastic. We're almost at 200. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to discuss this issue. I think today, and we're going to see uh, what we can do about it. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. I'm looking forward to discussing it with you. Um, by the way, if you want, if you're a brand. You have a company, you're a brand, and you want to be a part of what we're doing here as part of our mission. You can email me and you want to sponsor this uh, episode. We're looking for partners, not necessarily sponsors, but partners to help us out uh, financially as well as um, maybe logistically. Speak up for Blue Doc, or uh, you can email me, a Andrew, at speakupforblue.com. Don't forget, if you want to become part of our mission, you want to help our mission along, you want to sponsor us through the Patreon community as an individual, you can do so at speakupforblue.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Uh, become a contributor. Let's help get citizen scientists, um, I guess, together and talking about different programs and their experiences, because I think the more we discuss that, the more people get inspired to do it. So that's what we're looking forward to doing. We're going to launch that hopefully within the next couple of months. Um, and I'd love to hear your feedback. So go to speakupforblue.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. This is an exciting thing. This is enabling citizen scientists to really get into citizen science. That's what I'm hoping to do. So uh, thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it. I want you guys to have a great happy Friday, a great weekend. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Happy conservation.